So it did not take the drifter long to research where the infinite bazaar was uh, and what it was. And uh, he made his way there. Yes, sir. Made com completely on his way by the curiosity. He has to know who the Bohemian is. However, uh, the Infinite Bazaar is something completely different. Something kind of scary that makes the Drifter feel awkward. Because when he gets to it, he realizes it is the planet Evertide. And Evertide is a stasis-locked planet. Some catastrophe, some disaster happened here. To where time does not actually pass for this planet. It is a frozen moment in time that people come down on and do stuff on. Because of that, uh, very few people want to get near it, but there is what is called the Infinite Bazaar, a bazaar that goes on forever. People come, people go, but there's always a giant marketplace there. Uh, a place where people can trade things that are on the level and maybe not so on the level. Um, but there is also a well-known figure there, one known as the Broker, only as the Broker, a figure that uh, the legend of the Broker goes back as long as the Infinite Bazaar itself. And now, as Drifter steps foot out of the door for the first time, um, Bethany Parks and Jeffrey don't notice this at all. You guys, when you step out are kind of wowed by the bazaar and the marketplace uh, and very excited to be here but drifter you have an uneasy feeling in your stomach maybe it's the time lord genes but there is something about this place that just feels unholy if there is such a word for you something that makes your flesh crawl and all the hair rise on the back of your neck something that makes you not want to be here but you do also know that the answers that you seek are inside. Like I said, you guys have found the Infinite Bazaar. Uh, Drifter, you researched it. Uh, you decided to take everybody on a field trip. Uh, it is up to you whether you tell them that that's what you're going for to see the broker or not, because if I recall correctly, the message was just received by you. Um, but uh, yeah, you figure out what the Infinite Bazaar is, where it is, and uh, you head there. Yeah. Uh <coughs> I'm definitely going to tell everybody mm -hmm. he's doing well and also need to get this done so do we everybody can enjoy some kind of actual rest for once. <laughs> you forgot what game master you're playing for. Um, yeah, so you guys are standing there uh, to just describe the scene. Um, it is a kind of a desert planet just like windswept desert planet but in front of you stands this like four probably four or five mile wide bazaar uh just all sorts of different kind of like ramshackle buildings tents uh marketplaces people yelling people screaming you see ships around the door landed uh kind of just haphazardly in the in the random sand of this desert planet um, and you see a lot of people walking through this marketplace this bizarre uh, just looking at all sorts of things from like uh, ship weaponry to equipment to everything you guys start to kind of walk down the streets and and Jeffrey kind of chimes in and just looks at you and goes so this is where we're going to find this mysterious broker yeah that was the message if there was any place this just looks like a big old mess You're not wrong. If there's any place that would have some someone to be with a, just a single word as their name that might have answers is probably here. But the sooner we get out of here, well, the better. Yeah, well, Drifter, we've ever been to New York. It's pretty busy, and it's a lot of hustle and bustle. But this, this is like way worse. 
Uh, Je- Jeffrey actually uh, grabs Bethany on the shoulder uh, and just goes, Ah, Miss Parks, from uh, all your uh, problems with being alone, I would think you would thrive in a, lo- in a situation like this. I do like people, but this is too many people. He's like, well, I love people, and I tell you what, I love a good bazaar. Uh, being as though he is obviously rich, uh, so he is very happy to uh, to help you guys in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but we're gonna come to our first roll, which is to find the broker, uh, and we're gonna give that to the drifter. Um, and remember that James the ally, it, I'm sorry, Jeffrey the ally is usable by either one of you since he is in all of your proxies. Uh, and we're gonna make the roll. Uh, we're gonna make it charisma based. And I'm going to, oh boy, <laughs> throw all my luck in the beginning and <laughs> see if Jeffrey will help. Okay. Uh, so, who's got the stats for Jeffrey? I do. Uh, read them off there, Bethany. His charisma, uh, he's at, um... Well, he'll modify his charisma. Remember, he's a, he's an ally. Yeah, he's modif- he modifies it, um, by, he gives a plus two. But what's his downside? What's his, uh... I'm sorry, what's his botch? No, never mind. Never mind, sorry guys. It's been a couple weeks since we played. But uh, remember, your botch level is two. If you roll a one or a two, uh, you uh, he botches badly for you. Correct. Yep. If I recall correctly. Hold on, let me just look that up real quick. Uh, the bumble roll starts at two, but increases for each by two for each roll so the first roll as long as the player rolls a three or above is self safe from a bumble and the max negative they would suffer from a bumble is two uh the second roll they must roll over a five the third blah 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 so on and so forth so first roll the bumble roll uh it's a d20 roll above a two eight all right, so he does, he does not bumble, but the next time you want to use him, he is at a four, okay? Uh, and that counts for everybody. Uh, so now give me your roll with a plus two. Uh, that is going to be 22. 22 is a heck of pass. Uh, so just want to make sure I know what I'm doing here. Okay, all right. So uh, you succeed. Uh, well, Jeffrey succeeds. Uh, he, you kind of look to Jeffrey, and he's like, ha, 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 I thought you'd never ask. And he just turns, and uh, we just do a quick montage of him cutting around, like talking to people, kind of finagling with people. Uh, he buys a couple of weird fruits. He hands one to Bethany, uh, smiling. Uh, he's like, try this. It's very sweet. Bethany is instantaneously nervous because Jeffrey is somebody who likes gut milk or utter milk. Is it utter milk? It's up milk. Utter milk, yep. right? Who who likes the infamous utter milk from episode two? So uh, he's he's like, trust me, trust me. Um. Okay, I'll take a small bite of it. It's incredibly delicious. It is uh, very sweet. It's kind of peach-like, but has kind of like almost a red apple flavoring to it. It is uh, phenomenally delicious and juicy, and a welcome respite from the heat of this planet. Uh, When he sees that you like it, he looks at you and goes, I told you! Well, I mean, you like that utter milk, and it smells awful. He's like, ah, you're back on me about the utter milk. The utter milk is delicious. I don't know what you people see in that. Nonetheless, if you stick with me, there are perks. And then he kind of like winks at you. Because we all we all remember Jeffrey has the hots for. Jeffrey, I wasn't planning on letting you go so soon. 
Ah, he blushes at that. Like, he actually gets a little red cheeks. He's like, right, well, I, I found some, uh, yeah, some, some I, this way. And then he kind of, like, motions you guys on. Uh, you guys actually get to the, f- to kind of, like, weave through it. And, uh, Drifter, it almost feels like you guys are moving towards the center of the b- bazaar. Uh, kind of almost, like, through a maze. And, uh, sure enough, you arrive at what you feel like would be the center of the bazaar, just given what you know about placement and how aware of your surroundings because this planet is a nightmare for you. And, sure enough, in the middle of this place is a giant building. It is a two-story building. You're pretty sure it has a basement under the sand, and it is just built in here, which no other structure in this area is built in here. There is nothing like that. Um, it says in big red neon letters, broker, up above the, uh, the, the, the doors. They're big double doors, big red double doors that are shut. Uh, this is a windowless building, uh, which definitely causes nerves. And you guys can hear uh, thumping coming from inside, like a boom, 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 boom. Uh, in front of those two double doors is a large jadoon uh, dressed in uh, what looks to be like a full suit. Um, which is very rare for the Jadoon, obviously, uh, since they are basically the cops of the galaxy. Um, for anybody out there who's not huge into Doctor Who, they are the big rhino creatures that run around policing everything. Um, it's just kind of standing there looking angry. Junior, what do you think? Oh, I does look like there's another way in. <clears throat> well, let's try the direct approach. Okay, you walk up to the door. Yeah. Name. Ah, good day. Uh, the drifter here to. I'd like to speak to the broker. He uh he pulls up a clipboard, looks at the clipboard, looks at you, then surpri- completely on to your surprise walks back, grabs one of the door handles, and opens the door. You're on the list. Of course. Um, thank you. Let's, let's go in. Okay. Uh, He's going to a side to, uh, Bethany. I shouldn't have been on that one. Well, we might be famous. <laughs> I don't think this is a place where it's good to be that kind of famous. What? Don't you know when you go to Hollywood, you have to be famous to be on those lists? I remember. Uh, most of those people don't live very long. May- well, I mean... Maybe they've heard about quite a few of our successful adventures so far, Drifter. You never know. You know, we'll go with that. Jeffrey fixes his suit and goes, "Uh, You guys aren't used to being on the list. I am always on the list. And just kind of like walks, like struts right in. Uh, When you guys walk in, it is basically like a techno club. Uh, And you immediately hear like the thumping, like turn into basically sandstorm <laughs> like that's what's going on in the dance floor uh, there are pe- creatures of all aliens all shapes and sizes there's a large bar like basically when you walk in uh, there is a second floor above you um, that you don't know what's in there but in front of you this first floor is just like a balcony that overlooks kind of almost like a pit that pit is a dance floor uh, the DJ is in the far wall, uh, like, you know, playing his Space Age iPod. And then uh, there is uh, uh, down next to the bar, uh, next to the pit is a very large bar serving all manners of drinks. Uh, Jeffrey, you see, is like dancing back and forth. And then he goes, Bethany, Bethany, we should go dance. You're a dancer. 
Oh, come on, Bethany. Let's do it. And he, he like, takes your hand. He's he's not going to, like, drag you or anything, but he does kind of pull you. Right. Uh, okay. Oh, I'll be back. Yeah. Get at the lock. Yeah, yeah, I've separated you immediately. Um, <laughs> uh, you guys, uh, he drags you out of the dance floor, and you guys just start dancing as the music starts to, like, like uh, 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 rev up, hit that drop, kind of get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, Drifter, you're just kind of watching, um, and uh, you are immediately feeling, the, the, the flesh-crawling feeling that you have had is worse in this building than anywhere else ever. Um, and almost accompanying that, you hear a voice from behind you. Well, hello. Welcome to my establishment. You are an esteemed guest. I've been looking forward to you. Is going to turn dramatically. <laughs> you must be the broker. I've heard so much about. Uh, you see a guy, uh, oh, you see an alien, he's got red skin, uh, with tiny little horns coming out of the, the, the front of his, uh, uh, forehead. Uh, he has, uh, hair into a top knot in the, in the middle. Uh, a ridiculous haircut that you feel like, just given his presentation, he has so that other people won't comment on it. Like, that kind of guy. Uh, he then has kind of this, uh, this suit on, but, uh, it doesn't have a tie instead of, it's like, a high collar, uh, suit, uh, so white under black. And he just kind of looks at you, and he goes... Yes, none other than the broker, and you must be the drifter. I have been very excited about you. I've come quite a long way. Um, might we have somewhere to sit? He's like, oh, oh yes. We have deals to be done. You're here for something. Nobody comes to see the broker directly without coming for something. Follow me. You are the broker, not the greeter. He uh, he walks towards his office. Uh, Bethany, you and uh, uh, Jeffrey are kind of dancing, uh, but uh, you kind of look up on the balcony and see them kind of walking to the office, uh, just taking note of where he is. Uh, Jeffrey catches you looking uh, with his eyes up at the drifter, uh, and he goes, Ah, don't worry about him. Let's have some fun for a second. His drama seems to uh, encompass all of our trips sometimes. Not that I'm insulting him or anything, but let's just cut loose. Oh, I gotta make sure he's okay. So, I mean, we'll have a little bit of fun, but we do have to make sure that we get our friend and make sure he's okay. He's like, uh, of course, of course, but let's have some fun. Let's get a drink. Don't worry, no water milk. And then he turns and uh, uh, kind of walks over towards the bar to get to, get you a drink. Uh, we switch back to the office where the drifter is. You walk into the uh, as you walk towards the office, the door opens. Uh, you're about to cross the threshold, and he turns and puts up his hand. And he goes, "Just so you know, once you cross into the office, this is a place of deals and transactions, both perceived and non-perceived, are final." You understand this, right? <laughs> I I appreciate the your forthcomingness. I steps in. All right, as you step in, he smiles and slowly starts to shut the door and he goes I have to be forthcoming if I'm not forthcoming it's not gonna be any fun the door shuts as soon as the door shuts we cut away to Beth Beth you're not on the dance floor anymore uh, you you're suddenly standing completely alone completely completely alone in a desert on a dune hill just sand there's no music 
no Jeffrey, nobody. You're just there, and then you're not. And uh, I'm going to need you to give me uh, a roll. <laughs> and that is definitely going to be endurance, because if I recall correctly, you have a crippling fear of uh, all things uh, being alone. Uh, so we're actually going to make that even more difficult for you. We're going to add a 3 to that difficulty, so it is a 10 difficulty right now for your challenge. 15. Okay. Alright. Uh, you feel the absence of people and places like you have never felt. You have never felt more alone then you feel right in this moment. It's not even just like the feeling of you being alone in your apartment where there's people next door. There is no one, no one around you. You look around, kind of start to panic a little bit. Sweat starts to beat on your brow. Uh, you kind of start to run in a direction. Just, hey, maybe if I move a little bit off this dune, something will come into view that will be people or something uh, and you won't be completely alone, but no, you run like five or six feet and realize you are still completely and totally alone. Uh, you passed your endurance check, but your monophobia is just punching at the back of your head. It is constantly like, you're alone, you're done. Nobody's gonna ever find you. You're completely alone. You're never gonna get found. And that there's just this little voice in the back of your head constantly saying that to you. Um, we're going to switch back to the Drifter. We will come back to Bethany, because this is going to be an episode all about Bethany. Um, Drifter, you are completely unaware anything has happened. Um, you, the door shuts. He kind of walks over behind a desk, sits down, offers you a chair. Oh. Oh, oh wait, I need to... Perception to notice if there's anything amiss, or more specifically, the massive uh, absence of anything being amiss. I am going to go ahead and give you a plus four to this. I'm totally okay with this being your next challenge roll, but the plus four is because your senses are thrown off because something is so utterly temporally wrong about this planet, and now this figure in front of you. Uh, 13 with the plus 4 uh, not including it would be what perception would be be 15 total uh, well plus 4 from 10 uh, so you or, would need to hit a 14 you need to hit a 15 or higher to pass yeah so I have I rolled a 9 I've got plus 4 and then my perception is 2 well it's 15 how do you have a plus four? You told me I got plus four. No, 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 four. the difficulty's plus four. Oh, well, great. I'm sorry. Uh, never I not, mind. I did not mean to cause you problems, but the difficulty was plus four. I apologize. Well, no. I, um, I apologize for the mistake. He's too distracted by the wrongness of things. Yes. Okay. All right. So we're going to say that's a fail. Fail. Yep. Uh, okay. Mm. All right, yeah, you're too distracted. I mean, everything feels wrong here. It's impossible for you to get a bead on... Uh, wait, how much did you fail by? Uh, so if you got a 9 and your perception's 2... Oh, yeah, I got an 11, I need 11. a 15, so I missed it by 4. Okay. Um, yeah, he he's... Like, like I said, he's not like... Like, you're just so distracted by the wrongness of everything. Yeah. It's impossible to say what else is wrong given how wrong everything is you are you're in a nightmare right now and it, it it feels like guttural to you that you do not want to be here and you do not want to be around this guy there's something about this guy that absolutely makes your flesh crawl you don't know what it is like you don't know what it is you have suspicions that the whole stasis lock has something to do with it, but you don't know what it is. But there's something about this guy specifically that makes you feel even worse. He goes, mm, you're uneasy. I knew you'd be uneasy. I mean, I know everything. That's why you came to me, right? I have 
a few questions, but of course, thank you for the chair. May I get you, may I uh, offer your chair as well? He goes, oh, no, no, no. Please, please, let's get down to business, as it has already proceeded. What is it you wish to know? One impromptu god to another. Direct it is. <laughs> I would like to know about the Bohemian. Okay. He looks at you. And as he looks at you, you swear you hear him whispering in your ear. You're not, But he's not next to you. He's across the room. But you swear you hear him whispering in your ear. Either way, all of a sudden, the knowledge of who the Bohemian is, what he is, and what he is trying to do hits you like a ton of fucking bricks. I am not telling you, the player, what it is, but the drifter knows it. He knows absolutely, without a doubt, what the Bohemian is and what's about to happen. It is, however, at that point that the door bangs open and Jeffrey is standing there. She's gone! And then we're going to switch back to Bethany. Bethany! Yeah, you are really having a hard time as you uh, wander through the desert right now. I am going to have you make a quick roll. It is going to be an intelligence-based roll. And it is it is for figuring out where to go and what to do. Sixteen. Okay, alright. Okay. It is everything, taking everything in your power to quiet the voice that continues to remind you that you are going to die in the desert. You are going to starve. You are going to die of thirst. No one is going to come for you. You have no real friends. Like, th everything that you would be feeling as a monophobic, that is what's going through your head right now. Uh, but you just keep breathing. You remember your nursing classes. You remember your, your, the, the, your, your controlled breathing classes that you took to help you do your jobs uh, at Harmony Pines. You take deep breaths and you fight through the phobia that is literally threatening to make you curl into a fetal position and lay in the sand. But you manage to do it. You manage to fight through it and you end up seeing kind of off in the distance what seems to be some buildings. What do you do? I'm taking off to get to the building. I'm hoping there's people. <laughs> it's it's everything in you to not like panic sprint <laughs> towards the buildings. Right. You're like, okay, okay. Right. She, like she's like almost kind of like she's almost like kind of fumbling over her feet a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, as you start to go that way, uh, you all of a sudden see a figure. Uh, not at the buildings, but between you and the buildings. It wasn't there before, but it is there now. Uh, it looks kind of alien in nature, only about 10, 15 feet away from you, um, kind of walking in one direction and then stopping, and then walking in one direction and then stopping. What do you do? I yell, hey, over here! It does not seem to respond to you. I start heading towards it. All right. You head towards it. You get up close to it. Uh, and there's something very off about it. It is a... It seems to be feminine, but it's very insect-like. Uh, it's humanoid. It's bipedal. And it's wearing clothes, but it looks very insect-like. The only way you get a feminine feel to it is just uh, its body type. Uh, uh, and it, it's just kind of standing there, and it seems to be talking to someone. Um, and it's just talking for a second, and, uh, you, do you get close enough to try and hear what it's saying? Yeah, I'm gonna be 
say like an ear length away. Like I'm not gonna be like literally up in its face or anything <laughs> like that. I'm gonna be ear length away to where I'm able to hear it. Okay. But if I need to like be far away enough to wherever I need to like get away so I'm not in danger, I'm going to be in that distance. Okay. All right, you walk up towards it, and it's just kind of like talking, and you get there kind of right at the end, and it's like, I'm so sorry. I just, I can't anymore. You must understand I can't anymore. I hope you'll remember me. And then it vanishes. Like, it's just gone. I'm looking, like, I'm going to start, like, going towards getting even closer to see if there's something that I can see maybe what she was talking to. If not, like, I am going to kind of panic and, like, in the direction she was looking, I'm going to start digging in the sand. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so you kind of, like, go over and start digging in the sand. Uh, I want you to give me another endurance roll, and this time, uh, because of your phobia, I'm going to add a plus six to that difficulty. Because you are, you're really starting to get freaked out now. A 12. That is a failure. Yay. Okay. You start digging in the sand. Dig, dig, dig. She's a mess. Yeah, she's a mess. She actually has some tears. She, she, She's digging and then she feels like a wetness and she reaches up and she realizes she's been crying for like the last five minutes. Bethany's just been crying. Like that's how broken she is. And then you just hear, ah, I don't think I'm going to find what you're looking for down there. Don't think it all at all. Uh, Bethany just kind of looks up and sees this small, like, oh, lizard. Oh, yeah, immediately. The small lizard just kind of, like, cocks his head and looks at you and then cocks his head back to the right. Am I losing my mind? Yep, yeah, definitely. Definitely losing your mind. It's the only reason the lizard would be talking to you, right? I've seen some weird things. Are you real? I mean, what's reality at this point, right? Uh, I guess so. Do you know where we are? Look, I'm a lizard lady. I'm in my home. You're the one digging around. you can talk I figured maybe you might know what this place is called what is your home call it plots up to you and like its tongue comes out like three or four times uh, then it just goes am I real I don't know about that I don't know about that but you know what this place is called it's the same place you were in a second ago Yepers! You're a lot of things, lady. You're not stupid. I know that. I, I mean, I, I went to school for some things. Um. Obviously not for sand digging. The direction of... No, I don't normally dig in sand. Can't imagine that'd be a four-year bachelor's. A four-year master's program. No, no, it's not. Do you know where there's any other people, not animals? <laughs> Let's face it, lady. There are no other people. And you know that. And then the lizard just turns and, like, scampers off through the desert. <laughs> Leaving you alone again. And we're going to switch back to the drifter. <laughs> drifter! Jeffrey has just burst in the room. He's like, where is she? You're the only one. You're the only one who could possibly know where she is. He points at the broker, and the broker just kind of grins at him and then grins back at you and goes, I say, I think you should control your friend. You'd hate to get thrown out of this club. Jeffrey, be very careful. He's like, I'll be careful. I'll be careful upside his head. And starts to step towards the broker. Um, 
What do you do, Drifter? Carefully put his hand out and this is there are things going here that are beyond either of us. I will do what I can if you will give me a chance. Jeffrey and seems Jeffrey seems you know what? Uh, this will be the last roll of Act 2. So go ahead and give me a Charisma roll to calm Jeffrey down. I want, I'm wondering if... Oh, shoot. No. Okay. What? Um, you can use Jeffrey to calm himself down if you want. He is technically an ally. Yes. Although... Um, you got a four, remember. Yeah, you're up to a four on the yeah. bubble check. Yep. But also the... Alright, so I don't have... Temporal or... Uh, momentum points to spend. I can only use narrative points on narrative pushes. Yes. Yes. You get so many of them. Since we switched the system. Though I do want to say, I feel like we are halfway through this episode, <laughs> which would have been an yeah. hour and a half with the old system, so. Uh. I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to, well, that didn't work, but I'm going to use Jeffrey, um, Okay. He can add two to your and, roll, though. That's all he could do. If he's not going to be able to beat oh, two, uh, if that wouldn't save it, then that wouldn't save it. What's the target? Uh, it's just ten. I didn't add any extras. Then I'll use it. You'll use him? Yep. Alright, roll a d20 to see if he bumbles. you got to get better than a four. This one I rolled well. That's a 16. Alright, so his bumble check is up to 6 now, just so you know. Up to 6 to lean yep. on him. Alright, so your words don't calm him down. You can tell it's not, and he's about to go go crazy, and then all of a sudden he just he takes a deep breath. You can see his better like upbringing kind of gets a hold of him. He fixes his lapel and then looks at you in the eyes and goes, They took Bethany. They took took her. She had a drink in her hand and she vanished. Drink fell to the ground. He or his men had kidnapped her. And the broker just goes, ha! Kid I don't kidnap anyone. Not at all. I mean, I get there was... Breath. Go ahead. You strike me as someone who like who enjoys a game. Might we... As thanks for what's been given, might we try a brief challenge in exchange for the return of our compatriot Bethany Park? <laughs> he stands up and he goes, I knew you were going to be interesting. As far as challenges go, the game already happened. That was in the negotiation. And you already paid your price. The price was the girl, your companion, from one impromptu god to another. And your payment was the knowledge that you have in your head. Je Jeffrey turns around and goes, well, ask for a refund. Give him back whatever knowledge it is. We can figure it out. Get Bethany back. I offer no such return on a exchange Jeff although you your <laughs> although your I to be fair your lack your uh, dishonesty 
about your forthcomingness would be, I think, enough weight for a... another uh, deal. <laughs> another deal. My dear fellow, I am always open to deals. I just don't know that you have anything else I want. And in fairness, you should know better. I know what you are. You know what you are. You should know better. I gave you the terms the minute you walked through the door. And you agreed to them immediately without even asking a whim of what that price could be or what you could pay. And now you have paid your price, and I do not give refunds. But if you're asking for a refund, that is interesting. Are you asking for a refund? Would you give up that knowledge that I put in your head for your precious little human girl? Because if you would, I think it's time that we have a conversation from one impromptu god to another. Because... I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to give you something that is so much more important than the knowledge that I've already given you. And that is a lesson in how to be an impromptu god. We're going to switch off to Bethany. <laughs> Bethany! You find the villi this village. Uh, it is not what you were hoping for. It is... Basically, it was once a village that has been com almost completely buried in sand. You're pretty sure most of this village is under the sand somewhere. This is just like tips of buildings sticking out. Uh, that's how long this has been here and been destitute. Just the visage of some bricks and masonry just kind of standing around. You do, however, see another figure kind of standing in the middle of the field. Uh, not a field, in the middle of like, not a street, but in between one of the two buildings. Um, this figure also appears to be a woman. This doesn't look alien, this looks like an actual human woman. Panic, I, I go towards the woman. Okay. Uh, do you yell out to her or just go towards her? Just run straight toward her so where right. I get close enough to where I can like make out more of like not just a silhouette of somebody but more of like her features and stuff like that. Okay. You get up near her, she has long curly red hair down to the small of her back. Uh, she's wearing a completely different outfit than the, the person before, but, but still kind of like a t-shirt and shorts. Um, alien in nature, but just that kind of feel. Uh, she is also talking to someone and just goes, I just can't do it anymore. I can't do it. I can't be with you as to what you are. I watch you lose yourself. I watch you lose yourself every day, slowly turning into the monster that you promised you wouldn't become when we got together. She is talking to say, there's no one there. She's just talking. Do you wait and listen to her or do you interrupt? <laughs> <laughs> ma'am, ma'am, are you real? She does not respond to you. Instead, she seems to be quiet for a second, almost as if she's listening to someone else talk. Uh, and then you see her become visibly frustrated. Uh, and then she goes, no, it's enough. I'm going to run up to her and like almost like try to like hug her to see, make sure she doesn't like vanish before my eyes as well. You go right through her. And end up falling in the in the sand, uh, like she's not real. She's she's a, a mirage, a phantom, a visage, whatever. You end up in the sand. You turn around just in time to see her go. I'm done. I'm out. And then turn and walk. And as she turns to walk away, she vanishes. Damn it, Bethany, pull it together. Pull it together. You're really losing it. You are losing it. This is pretty. This is getting pretty sad. You hear from your right. You kind of turn over and see that annoying lizard. How are you doing here? I mean, I'm everywhere you are. What are you, my mouse in my pocket? I'm not your mouse in your pocket. I'm your lizard in your head. Your lizard brain. I'm not a lizard. 
Don't be afraid. That's not very nice. Who taught you your manners? <laughs> well, that's racist. I'm a lizard. You're saying the lizard isn't nice? Ah, that's just mean. That's cold-hearted and prejudiced, if you ask me. I, I'm not cold-hearted at all. I'm the most caring person in the world. You can ask. Well, you could have asked the Drifter and Jeffrey. I don't even know where they are anymore. I know. And you're really scared. That's why you've manifested a lizard friend out in the middle of the desert. What do you think this place was? Sure, I think it might be a town. I'm gonna Maybe. be stuck here all alone by myself, losing my mind, going crazy, and I'm gonna be stuck talking to you. Yes, well, well, you know, I'm only as terrible company as you're imagining me to be, so this is all on you. And then he just kind of like lizards off into a crevasse. I'm going to go back to maybe like one of the tops of the, the buildings and stuff and kind of like walk the perimeters of it and see if like maybe I can find like something that tunnels down into like the town where it was. Ooh. Like maybe under the sand or some sort. Like maybe it's like a dune of some sort. I like it. All right. Give me a intelligence check. Nineteen. Okay, so you you kind of walk up, you walk up, and you you find like there's one kind of pillar that manages to to kind of stand up like a story above the sand, uh, and you kind of realize it's almost like a a, a church tower, you know, like a bell tower of a church. Uh, and you, you're able to kind of like scale the side of it a little bit where it's been decrepited and fallen apart. Uh, and you manage to climb into the bell tower itself. And sure enough, there's steps on the inside of the bell tower going down well below where the sand is. But you also, since you scored so high, you also notice something else. Looking out over the dune, uh, you see tons of different figures standing and talking in different places. Like, it immediately becomes apparent to you, of, of all different distances, some of them are a mile away, some of them are just on the outskirts of the city, some of them are like, just behind you, men, women, all sorts of figures. They're all just like talking, vanishing, then another one will appear, and talking, vanishing, another one will appear. Oh, Beth, you have to go in your graveyard. <laughs> graveyard. All places. I mean, yeah, but what kind of graveyard? Dead. You hear the lizard say he's now on the roof. I mean, oh, I don't see any dead bodies. Ha ha, real funny. I mean, I bet you'll find some dead bodies down there. <laughs> I mean, for somebody who's scared of being alone and scared of tight places, you're about to crawl under a sand dune. What if it collapses? <laughs> the sand will just come in on you. You'll die immediately. Or what if the stairs give way and you're just stuck quiet. in the hole be forever? Be too loud. Oh my god, Bethany, be quiet. Give me an endurance check. Twenty. You say Bethany be quiet and the lizard vanishes. You manage to quiet the lizard. Bethany, get it to Together, get it together, get it together. I know we're nervous. We're in a very strange place. We have nobody here, but all these mirages. Of course, we got a, we've got a puzzle on our hands, and the drifter isn't here to help us figure this out. We gotta pull this together, man. Pull it together, man. Pull it together. So, are you gonna go down the stairs? I am. We're okay. gonna try and go down the stairs. Maybe we can find something. Because now Bethany's thinking this is some kind of puzzle she has to solve to get back where she was. Facing her fears. I love it. I love it. 
Now we're going to switch back to the drifter. Uh, at this point, uh, uh, the 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 broker is just kind of looking at you. You see him. He's he's kind of got an upset face at this point. He was like, "So, you want to ask for a refund?" Perception to notice the changes when the doors open, and then a second roll to identify any kind of uh, devices at, or mechanisms in the room. Let's just do one blanket for all of it. Um, and I'm going to throw one of the uh, narrative points for Born Lucky to ship that to uh, Intelligence or Charisma, the same value. Oh, uh, okay, cool. Did you pass? No, because the dice hate me and that ruined my whole narrative thing. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, so yeah. Uh, well, that was useless. No, I don't notice anything. <laughs> How much did you fail by? Completely. It's a that's a total of five. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna scratch out that pass. Make that a succeed. Uh, fail. Okay. Um, all right. You're kind of getting upset. Uh, and again, your senses are going crazy with the with the temporal force around you. Uh, and uh, yeah, there is no. I will say this much: there's no mechanisms in here, other than the door and the hinges. There's no mechanisms. There's no trick, like there, there's no tricks, as far as technological stuff. There's obviously something wrong with this guy and this planet, but there's no like technological doohads. That he's using against you. So I ask you again, Drifter, are you asking for a refund? The Jeffrey looks at you and goes, Get a refund, man. We have to get Bethany back. She is afraid of being alone, Drifter. She could be out there alone somewhere. You don't know how long she'll last. You can see Je Jeffrey's truly concerned for Beth. As if there was ever such a... a thing as gods or fair exchanges. <laughs> you had no intention of... You've never had any intention of giving things in the first place. Jeffrey! Go ahead. Take this... <clears throat> Think as... As thanks, or as apology for what we've, uh, I've, I've done for you here. Go ahead and take this guy down a peg. I'm going to aid other, and then I'm also going to see if I can manipulate the, the lock, the time lock. Oh. Okay. All right. Like the the stasis field on the entire planet. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, give me a roll. I just I just want to see how good you roll. Intelligence-based. Because... Uh, using, using Rogue Engineer and my Sonic. Okay, all right. It's, it's not going to be what you want it to be. I'm going to say that ahead nope. of time. But I'll give you something if you get good roll. Uh, that is going to be... 22. Oof. Okay. All right. Jeffrey, Jeffrey's like, you asked it. Uh, he, he steps forward and he's like, my father wasn't good for much, but he sure as hell threw, showed me how to throw a punch. He steps around the desk and goes to throw the punch, and then he's just frozen. Like, he's just like stasis in mid-punch. The broker takes a deep breath. I'm getting tired of this. You are too young for this he he steps out away jeffrey just stays in place uh you hit the sonic and when you hit the sonic he almost like acquiesces to your sonic reading um not not in fear almost like he's letting you see something um and he is letting you definitely see that the 
we'll get back to it. I want Bethany to get mm-hmm. somewhere, and then we'll come back yeah. so you guys can realize at the same time. Bethany, you work your way down this church. Every second is agony because it is dark and it is terrible. Somehow, you manage to find like, uh, like a like a little. I don't know. Do you have anything that would light your way down there, on you? Uh, I'm gonna say your phone. You would have your usually, phone on you. I was gonna say yeah, Bethany. I was gonna say Bethany okay. usually has. Her phone Everybody's got a phone. All right, you a- you pop your phone flashlight on and you slowly move down into this place. And the weight of the sand on the outside of this building, you feel every second of it. But somehow the sand has not penetrated the roof or walls of the main body of this church. However, you realize quickly once you get to the bottom, it's not just a church. It's also a laboratory. Uh, there is something about these people, this, this, this long dead society, that intermingled religion with science. Like, that's what they were doing here. You see a lot of stuff going on here. You you don't see any of the ghosts down here. Uh, But you start to look at things, kind of go over things uh, with uh, with your light. And then you start to see a faded picture in a broken kind of frame. You kind of move over to it and you pick it up. And sure enough, you see a series of red-skinned, big-horned people, almost like an alien race. One of them is the broker. Give me an intelligence check. This is an important one. Uh, you know what? 21. I will let you add, if you want to use a narrative push on, like, medical or whatever. Did you just say 21? Mm-hmm. Oh, that doesn't matter then. All right. It suddenly comes to you in a bolt. You look at the picture, you see it him, you see all of them, you see how old it is, then you kind of bring up the the, 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 the flashlight and go over the room, you just see all this technology and all of this messed up stuff, uh, and you realize that a terrible catastrophe happened here, and that this broker is the last one of these people alive somehow. Like whatever this time stasis is, whatever this field is, this broker is it. Uh, And that, because you rolled so good, I'm basically just telling you the entire story, but that actually feeds into the ghosts. Like once you start to realize, you're like, the ghosts are all the people, all the people he's known over all of these lifetimes. And then we switch back to the Drifter. Drifter, you see all of this. You see the dis- the disaster that created the stasis field that the planet is locked in. You see him part of basically a team that created this. He's the only one who survived, and it locked him in the stasis. So he is basically a fourth dimensional being now. On this planet, he cannot leave, but he has complete and total autonomy within it. Basically, he exists at all points and all times, in all places, on this planet. So that's how he can do anything. He's just there. He's always there, everywhere. He he exists outside of the third dimension on this planet. You see that now. (laughs) And uh, he just looks at you and goes, you see it. You see it for what it is. An impromptu god to another. And I am going to give you the lesson now before you make your final decision on the refund because if you want your precious Bethany Parks back, that is the only way you are going to get it. But you have to come to the realization that impromptu gods cannot be friends with them because at the end of the day, no matter how many of them you take in, they eventually die. They eventually leave you and they just add to the hole in your soul that just gets bigger and bigger until you one day realize that they are just subjects and you are a god. And that is the reality of it drifter because i have been alive and will be alive for eternity here and i know everything there is to know about you i know that's not your only face i know this is not the only time you will see me and i know you will live many years and become much wiser than you are now but you continue to travel with this person and i am now going to show you the error of that i am going to show you that all they do is go away 
because all you have is eternity and they will be gone in a flash. So I ask you one final time, Drifter, because this is the only way you are walking out of here with your friend Bethany Parks. Do you want a refund? You will give me an absolute guarantee of this or I will free you from your eternity. I am tired already of these games. We are not gods. You don't just take your sadness out on on me. I asked a valid question and you just want to play games. Fine. Take it. Return it. Or I will remove this little bubble. Or even better, keep you in it without anyone coming to visit you for the rest of your sad eternity. He looks at you and goes, You and I both know you can't do that. Because I've been forever, and I know you can't. I've already done this a thousand times. And I see now that you are too young to understand the philosophies I'm putting forth to you. I don't do this because of sadness. I do this because the game is all that matters anymore. It's all that's left inside me. But fine. You don't want to learn anything. You don't want the lesson. That's fair. Take your Bethany and go. But I'll tell you this, Drifter. I will be here. I will be here the next time and the time after that because you know what I know is absolute and you always need to come back. Maybe not this time, but one time, you'll come back, and you'll give. Then he sits down at the desk, and you find yourself outside the Brokers Club, uh, standing there. Uh, Jeffrey is just standing next to you. He's, How in the hell did we... And he turns, and Bethany, you are so happy to finally hear the thumping of the club again because you are standing outside with uh oh no wait no no i want to do something different okay uh you're outside with defrey uh bethany you're hearing the thumping of the club again and you find yourself in an office an office you've never been in before uh you're sitting across from the broker um and he is just he's looking at you he's like Sorry for that unpleasantness. I was trying to teach your friend something. I know you... Teaching my friend something? I know you saw the truth. You saw the memories. Of course I did. I wasn't gonna... be in that... Oh, goodness. That rabbit hole. And not, you know, try and figure it out. I figured it was some kind of puzzle. We've had to go in deal with tons of puzzles already he stands up and looks at you uh, and he actually has like a concern in his eyes that you can see and he goes Bethany you don't know this but he can't die he'll exist probably as long as I have as long as I will and you're gonna be the first because you will die or leave him and that will open the hole inside him and then he will try and fill it and the next one will die and the next one after that and the next one after that. You need to prepare yourself for that, Bethany. You need to prepare him for that because whether he wants to admit he's a god, he is one. Do you understand that? I know he's different, and that's okay. We're all a little different, Broker. But the problem is, is the thing that I don't think you know about me, is I will be with him until the bitter end. That's the way I am. I am always with my people until the end. And regardless, if I'm going to be the one that goes, I will make sure that he himself will be prepared and be okay because I will always let him know at the very end 
that it's okay to let me go. Maybe they weren't doing that for you. And that's maybe what you hold on to is, is you were hoping maybe somebody prepared you for that and was a friend. But Drifter will always have a special place in my heart and I hope I have the same for him. Broker takes a second, looks at you, then steps forward and hugs you. He hugs you earnestly and tightly and you just hear him whisper the words, you remind me of so many people I used to know. Good luck I to you, Bethany. Him. And I'm gonna give him a hug back and I'm gonna be like, listen, maybe they weren't able to tell you, but from what I saw, you guys were a family. Please forgive yourself and forgive them. Ah, oh, give me a charisma roll. That's I, that I was not expecting to do because that was so good. It was very good. It was very good. 15. Okay. He kind of looks at you. Good luck to you, Bethany. Uh, you walk out, and uh, the minute you walk out of the club, like Drifter's like about ready to go storm back in because Drifter, the knowledge that you had is gone. It's a taste of it in your head. Like, you, you're like, oh, I knew it, but it's not there anymore. Uh, ah, how did he take it back out? That's, ah. And then you're trying to figure it out, but you're like, if I'm not getting the knowledge, I'm getting Bethany. You're about to go back in when Bethany comes out. Jeffrey sprints past you, hugs Bethany. Uh, what do you do, Drifter? This. Uh, yo, I'm not going to... to... <clears throat> To break it up, it's ooh, <laughs> it's doing a lot. Um, gonna, and then you're gonna walk over and um, what? Put his head on on Bethy's shoulder and just say, uh, "For what it's worth, I'm, I'm sorry." And I then I'm gonna put my hand on his shoulder, on my shoulder, on his hand, and be like, "There's no apology needed. There's no sorry. We are together to the end, and this is just the way it's going to be." I, of course, spoke to the broker. He's a bit broken. Oh no! <laughs> she froze right in the middle of it. No. Okay. We heard. We heard. I spoke to the broker. He's a little bit brokenhearted. I know it. It cut right there. <laughs> sucks. It sucks. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I'll repeat it. Okay. I put my hand on my, on my shoulder, where Drifter has his hand, and I say, "There's no apology needed. We're going to be together to the end of this. We are now together as one. But of course." The drifter might be looking at things a little bit differently because he's a bit brokenhearted. Okay, I think you meant the broker there, not the drifter. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the broker. <laughs> uh, at this point, you guys walk back out of the bazaar towards the uh, the door, and Bethany kind of looks over in an alleyway up at one point and sees a lizard, and it just winks at her. And then we're gonna cut back. To the broker inside and this scene is only happening because of bethany's charisma check uh he kind of walks back over behind his desk you can see he's actually really struggling with something uh then he turns and he stands up there's a picture on the wall uh and it's just a picture of a heart just like a really artistic drawn heart he opens the heart he slowly turns a safe opens the safe and inside the safe are just lockets. Locket after locket after locket after locket after locket. Probably hundreds of lockets in here. And he just looks at them all and goes, I miss you. And then that's where we're gonna end the episode. <laughs> this has been ID, a Doctor Who actual play podcast. Episode six, Monophobia, starring Aether Dios, as the drifter you can find aether dios on x at tty aether dios hope child as bethany parks you can find hope child on created with love by jackie rakes on facebook 
for all of your custom Tumblr needs. Myself, Zachariah from Old Man Gaming, edited and game mastered this episode. We will be back next week, barring any consequences. As long as you keep watching and listening, we'll keep making another one.